Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Jack and for this video I'm going to take a deeper dive in the comparison of CBD to something called Copaiba or Copaiba, however you want to pronounce it. I've been getting a lot of comments from various subscribers asking me to do this comparison and so I've taken a deep dive into it and I'm going to present everything that I've found and my thoughts on it. We'll sort of do a comparison of the two and whether or not a comparison is even fair to do in this circumstance and talk about how both of them have their place in health and wellness and talk about each of their own little intricacies. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So very briefly, let's start by talking about CBD or what's commonly referred to as cannabidiol. It is one cannabinoid within the cannabis plant and it's generated a lot of buzz starting about late 2018, early 2019, ever since the farm bill made CBD derived from hemp as long as the THC stays below less than 0.3%. And ever since then, many people have been finding the health benefits and how it helps them for all sorts of things. A lot of research has been conducted and they're still being conducted and more research is coming out almost weekly to sort of go over the intricacies of all this. And those of you that are familiar to the channel know that I've done a ton of videos kind of covering all of these different aspects uh, to the best that I can to keep you guys updated on all of this information. And we cannot cover the topic today without talking about the endocannabinoid system. And just so you guys know, I am going to be kind of briefly skimming over a lot of the nomenclature or definitions that we'll be using. Um, you can't really do justice to this topic of comparing CBD to Copaiba without really kind of talking about some of these details. And so you can either replay it um, or kind of go back and watch other videos like the one on how CBD works and various other topics. I'll have those videos kind of pop up. Um, in the corner if it makes sense for you to kind of reference them. But the endocannabinoid system, what is it? It's your body's own cannabis system that plays a crucial role in regulating every major system within the body. Things like your immune system, your digestive system, cardiovascular, pulmonary, all of this is tied into the endocannabinoid system. This system essentially provides homeostasis or balance within the body. So if you look at the importance of homeostasis or having this kind of balance inside of your body, if we look at the immune system in regards to inflammation, obviously if your immune system is weak, you're more prone to get sick. However, if it is not functioning correctly or overacting, you can get things like rheumatoid arthritis or RA or inflammatory bowel syndrome or lupus psoriasis, eczema, fibromyalgia, and if your hormone or endocrine system is out of balance, you can be prone to things like cancers, diabetes, thyroid issues, fertility problems. And in regards to the central nervous system, if it is out of balance, things like insomnia, migraines, seizures, anxiety, and things like ADD can start to occur. And it is because of this sort of wide, broad range of interactions with so many systems within your body that leads to the broad effects of CBD. You know, in past videos I talk about how my journey sort of started and why my research uh, or why I've been so interested in the cannabis plant, uh, specifically how it relates to uh, particular cannabinoids as well as the terpenes and flavonoids, which we'll get into here shortly. But it's just been a mountain of information that has already been done and is currently being done to talk about why CBD works, how it works, and what the implications are moving forward. So let's first start off talking about copaiba. What is copaiba? Well, copaiba is a tree. The copaiba tree is prominent within South America, mainly in Brazil. It grows up to 100 feet tall. It's grown in the wild because it takes typically 50 to 100 years before the actual resin within the copaiba tree can actually be tapped and extracted and ultimately turned into the oil that is used in various aromatherapy or topical applications. And actually, since the 16th century, Brazilians have been using it as a type of medicine in that regard as well as ingesting it. And you can ingest it, but it has to be in quite diluted amounts uh, because of the fact that if you take too much of it, it almost presents almost like a sort of food poisoning picture, like with nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, as well as if you take too much for too long, you can actually cause liver damage as well. Copaiba oil has been found to have various health benefits. Actually, hundreds of studies have been conducted looking at all of this, and it's been found to 
offer benefit in regards to things like inflammation as well as offers neuroprotection or protection of your nerves and also as a form of antimicrobial to help fight against infection and things like that. And the list kind of goes on and on. Just do a Google search and you'll find a ton of data sort of looking at the benefits of copaiba oil. So how exactly does copaiba offer these types of health benefits? Well, copaiba, what makes it really, really special is actually its concentration in something called beta caryophylline and beta caryophylline is a terpene. A terpene is essentially what gives uh, fruits and vegetables, plants, its aroma as well as its flavor, and it's sort of the foundation of aromatherapy as well as essential oils. And again, there have been a whole host of studies showing how it offers all kinds of health benefits by itself. In various hospitals, uh, they even have aromatherapy specialists that kind of go through the ICUs and the hospital basically offering this type of therapy to help patients heal from, you know, you know, being ill or surgery. So what makes beta caryophylline special as a terpene is the fact that it interacts with the body's endocannabinoid system or the body's own cannabis system. And it works through a receptor called CB2. And just real briefly, within the endocannabinoid system, there are two main receptors that are looked at. One of them is CB1, the other one is CB2. CB1 mainly resides within the central nervous system as well as in other places, but that's where it mainly concentrates. And then there's also CB2, which concentrates sort of in the periphery, in the immune system, as well as organs. And it's important to be aware that beta caryophylline is not just specific to the copaiba oil or the tree. Um, it's actually found in all sorts of things. It's what gives things sort of a kind of spicy or wood-like smell. So I'm talking about things like uh, black pepper, rosemary, oregano, hops, cloves, even find it in basil and lavender, and also cannabis. Within the cannabis plant, there's also a significant amount of beta caryophylline. And in particular, can cannabis strains, it can be found in makeup of 25% of the terpene content within those particular strains of cannabis. And so it is this binding of the beta caryophylline directly to the CB2 receptor within the endocannabinoid system uh, that actually makes it special and causes all of these various health benefits that we talked about. And oftentimes you'll hear about beta caryophylline talked about as if it is a cannabinoid. And that is the reason why, is because it is a terpene that actually has cannabinoid-like properties through this particular interaction. So now let's talk about CBD or cannabidiol and how it works. Well, it works through many, many different pathways and it seems like we still haven't discovered all the various pathways that it works through. For the sake of time and the length of this video, I can't get into all the details, but just know that it is so complicated that there has actually been symposiums done like titled cannabis. It's complicated. <laughs> And as you can see here from this slide, CBD works through many different pathways where it essentially interacts with all types of receptors to have a certain outcome and affecting things like anxiety, perception of pain, depression, addictions, insomnia, as well as interfering with a particular enzyme there at the bottom, the FAAH enzyme. And what that does, it keeps your body from breaking down its own cannabis molecules. And yes, your body makes its own cannabis molecules, things like ananamide or 2-AG. And CBD has been shown to suppress cytokine activity within the body. And this type of activity is involved in things, again, like inflammation and the immune system, helping you heal after any type of trauma, as well as things like cancer. And briefly, I just want to talk about CBD in regards to how the literature, as well as if you read any articles online talk about CBD, the focus typically is always talking about just cannabidiol or CBD in general. However, I think it is important to kind of take a step back and view not just CBD, but talk about the cannabis plant overall and all of its health benefits in regards to a full spectrum CBD product. And what do I mean by full spectrum? So I did do a video talking about the differences between full spectrum, broad spectrum, isolate, and all these different things. And when I talk about full spectrum, I'm talking about all the other terpenes, which we've covered, um, as well as the other cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. There's over 140 different cannabinoids within the cannabis plant as well as something else called flavonoids 
and flavonoids is basically what gives fruits and vegetables plants its color and it's also been found to have various health benefits as well specific to the cannabis plant there's actually canflavin a and b and i've mentioned this in past videos of mine as well where canflavin a and b has been found to have upwards of 30 times the anti-inflammatory effects of aspirin per gram. And so when we talk about CBD, I think it's really important to kind of look at the overall plant and all these other phytonutrients, phyto meaning plant, plant nutrients, and how they sort of interact with each other to create something called the entourage effect. And the entourage effect, you know, much like the, <laughs> the show that ran for eight seasons, awesome show, uh, if you guys ever looking to be entertained. But what I'm talking about here is essentially the entourage effect, meaning that all of these different aspects of the plant create synergy or have this synergistic effect, meaning that each part of it amplifies the effects. And this has been shown in various studies where if you take just CBD alone, you have to take it as a at a higher dosage in order to obtain a certain effect, whereas if you take it as a full spectrum and have all these other things like the other terpenes as well as flavonoids that the cannabis plant has to offer and that includes the beta caryophylline that's inside of the cannabis plant it plays out to where the whole plant is actually greater than the sum of its parts. So in closing I feel that the copaiba tree as well as the cannabis plant are amazing gifts from nature and they both have their various roles in health and wellness. However, in doing my research and going online, I'm seeing a lot of sort of misinformation out there and comparing uh, the two and I'm not sure that the comparison can go very far. You can compare the two when you're talking about the beta caryophylline aspect and there are similar benefits to both of them. However, I feel that ultimately, when you look at the various chemical pathways within the human body and how they each work and the broader range of pathways that the cannabis plant has to offer in achieving various effects within the human body, then the comparison pretty much ends at the beta caryophylline stage. And it's like comparing apples to oranges. They both can be beneficial, but they are quite different. And I can say that for me, especially in dealing with chronic pain patients, having something that offers a broader range of effect is important because much like previous videos that I've talked about the chronic pain syndrome where patients present and it's not just physical pain, but over time that syndrome can cause things like insomnia as well as anxiety, depression, PTSD-like symptoms and things of that nature. It's important to me to have something that offers sort of a broader range of effect covering many various pathways to achieve a desired outcome. Ultimately, I feel that the copaiba tree and the oil does have properties that can benefit various individuals. And I think it would be great to take alongside something like a full spectrum CBD or broad spectrum CBD. And please be aware that there hasn't been any studies to really compare the two side by side. They have not looked at, well, does it benefit you to take copaiba oil alongside CBD in a full spectrum or as an isolate form, if you will, or does one work better than the other? What I'm hoping to do here in this video is basically lay out the various pathways and how all of this works within your body and what we know so far and pre present the data as it's available at this time and then you can draw your own conclusion. And yes, I see all of the issues within the CBD space at this time in regards to pricing or price point of entry, as well as the quality issues and just sort of all the complexities, right? That's why I'm able to make so many videos on this one topic. At this time, you do get what you pay for in the CBD industry. It's, uh, you know, if you want the best top shelf CBD product, yes, there will be a cost to that. And trust me, if a company can make the absolute best CBD product, product and sell it at the absolute cheapest price, they would do that because they would absolutely dominate the market. However, as it stands now, there isn't really a lot of regulation within the CBD space. And because of that lack of regulation, you have all sorts of products on the market that plays along the entire spectrum. But the quality of CBD really does make a big difference. And that's why I would encourage you to kind of go back and educate yourself on previous videos about what makes a high quality product and what you should really look for. You wouldn't really know until you actually went out and started trying a reputable brand or product, one that you've done your homework on and seeing what the effects are over time. And so I hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, if you did, please hit the like 
like button to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe, share these videos with individuals that you think may benefit from this. And so till the next video, I'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe. Bye-bye. Pura Vida.